Borussia Mönchengladbach used to be one of Germany's most successful clubs, amassing five Bundesliga titles, three DFB Pokals and also two UEFA Cups. But in recent seasons, the Falls have started to massively struggle in the Bundesliga. They have made a very poor start to the 24-25 season, sitting 14th in the table with just one win from their opening four games. Last season, they finished 14th in the table, finishing just one point above the relegation playoff. And in the 22-23 season, they languished in mid-table. You know, it really does pain me to see a massive club like Munch and Gladbach struggling at the foot of the Bundesliga. So today we are jumping into FC25, we're taking charge of Munch and Gladbach and we are going to win them a Champions League trophy. And if you do enjoy the content boys, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as we are trying to get 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Let's jump into FC25 and get Munch and Gladbach rebuilt. So this is the Munch and Gladbach team we have loaded into in FC25 and I have to say boys, I was expecting it to be a lot worse than this. Going off the player ratings in FC25, I think it's safe to say that Munch Munch and Gladbach are underachieving with the squad that they have. Now, I wasn't a fan of the 4 2 3 1 formation for Munch and Gladbach, so we have changed it to a 4 3 3 holding. Now, one issue I have found with this Munch and Gladbach squad is that our star players are all at the peaks of their career. Like goalkeeper Omlin, he is 30 years old and 79 rated. Weigel, who's a key part of our midfield, is 28 years old and 79 rated. And Plea, who's probably our best attacker, is 77 rated but 31 year old. However, there are some pretty good young players at the club. Joe Scally is a 21 year old. 74 rated right back. Luca Nett is a 21 year old 74 rated left back. And we also have a pretty decent midfielder in Rock Eats who's 74 rated and 22 year old. So we do have some pretty decent youngsters. I'm just a bit concerned that our best players are aging. On further inspection of the squad boys, I have just noticed that Monch and Gladbach have loaned out Kowadio Kone to Roma. This guy is absolutely class. There's no way this guy should not be playing for Munch and Gladbach. So we are recalling him for 276,000 euros and he's going straight into the starting lineup. And this is important because the first summer transfer window is disabled meaning we cannot make any signings this summer this is the tactic we're going to be using going into season one it's got wing backs box to box midfielder holding midfielder two inside forwards and advanced forward feel free to pause if you want to analyze further so we can't actually make any signings in season one like we've discussed however the board were very very stingy they've only give us 20 million euros which is a little bit like real life as munch and gladback have only spent 8 million euros on transfers despite being so poor for the last few seasons so for me season one is all about consolidating in the board Bundesliga, I want to be nowhere near that relegation playoff like they have been in real life. When I look at that starting 11, I do think we'll have enough to be well clear of the relegation playoff. We do actually have some pretty decent players. And in all honesty, looking at our bench, there's definitely options there to come on, swing a game in our favour if we're not winning or if we're losing. So I'm pretty confident we can do better than Munch and Gladbach are doing in real life. However, you know what FC games are like. It's completely unpredictable. So now that we've sorted out the starting 11, picked a formation, sorted our tactic, analysed the squad, I don't think there's really much more we can doing season one so as of right now we are simulating forward straight through to the end of the season like we've already said i just want to be nowhere near that relegation playoff then the real hard work can begin in season two when we can bring players through the door so we've arrived at the end of season one boys and we have had an excellent season finishing sixth in the bundesliga which has really taken me by surprise winning 17 of our 34 games only losing nine finishing on 59 points we was only actually two points off the europa league all in all that is very very impressive and as you can see we will be playing in the conference league next season which could be a nice little learner on the side for us and i cannot lie i am a little bit convinced that the cup competitions are bugged in fc25 if you watch the brighton rebuild we got dumped out of the fa cup in pretty much the first round every single time we've been knocked out of the dfp pokal by stuttgart 2-0 in the second round i make that six seasons completed in fc25 over the two rebuilds and we've only got past the first knockout phase once so this is the team at the end of season one and we have had a few players reach 80 rated in honorat and omlin as you can see the has been some changes to the starting lineup as Reitz and Hack are now both in the starting 11 with Stoiger and Plea dropping to the bench. The reasoning behind this was just simple. Reitz and Hack have got, probably got much better potential. I wanted to get them in the first team and get them growing while Plea and Stoiger can still make a good contribution from the bench. However, looking at the team, there is definitely some weaknesses heading into season number two and I do think Elvedi at the back is going to need replacing with a better younger centre-back. He hasn't grown at all this season. He's 28 years old. He's probably in his prime years do think a better center back would definitely boost our chances of getting into the europa league or maybe even cracking into the top four looking at the rest of the squad i'm not too concerned about joe scally who has got showing great potential he will continue to develop nicely across this rebuild however when i look out to the left wing hack is 26 years old and 77 rated i am going to be bringing in a younger high potential left winger at the end of the season 
on our bench is also looking really, really strong. Plenty of options there, and I'm really happy with how the squad's looking going into season two. In terms of stats, what a season Tim Kleendienst had as he got 26 goals, and I can't lie, he absolutely carried us to a sixth place finish. Honor got nine and six. Lee got seven and five in 18 games, which is really, really decent. But other than that, not many goals at all for the rest of the squad, and that is something we definitely need to improve in season two. So I actually think season one was a massive success. We will be playing in Europe next season. Let's get into season two. We can finally make transfers and start getting some fresh faces through the door. So we've arrived in season two. We can finally make transfers and we've got 52 million euros to make these deals happen. And we are wasting absolutely no time getting stuck into our transfer business as the first player we've identified to bring to Munch and Gladbach is Malik Tio, currently playing for Valencia. He's 23 years old, 80 rated. His stats are brilliant. However, this could be a very pricey deal as Valencia could want up to 43 point nine million for him which would use up most of our budget so we're going to knuckle down and try and get a really good deal out of Valencia for Tio and Malik Tio becomes the first signing of the Munch and Gladbach rebuild for 36 million euros so we did get an absolutely excellent deal for Tio but that does only leave us with 13 million euros in the bank so we've got no option but to sell some players and we have not messed about when it comes to outgoings boys some players have been replaced mainly young players who've got no chance of getting into the first team and some aging players who were actually first choice last season have been moved on because I feel like we've outgrown them as a club. Picking things off, Philip Sander has joined Athletic Club for 5.4 million euros. Yvandro Borges Sanchez has joined a Saudi Arabian side, 3 million euros. Alisan Pli has been moved on. He's joined Getafe for 7.7 .7 million euros. Kevin Stoger has joined PSV Eindhoven for 13 million euros. Nico Elvedi has joined Celta Vigo for 7.5 million euros. Grant Leon Ranos has joined Atalanta United for 1.9 million. And we have also sold Marvin Frederic to Monza for 5 million. You may be surprised to see players like Stoger and Play leave the club. However, they've reached the peak of their careers. They are going to start declining. We need better, younger players if we're going to get to the Champions League. And after those sales, we now have 79 million euros in the bank and we can bring in an absolutely quality left winger. And because we've recuperated so much transfer budget, we can really bring in a top-end left winger. And that is exactly what we are doing as we are going to go in for Bradley Barcola of PSG. He's 22 years old, 82 rated. The stats are insane it's going to be a very very pricey deal as psg could drive a hard bargain and ask for up to 72 million euros i'm pretty confident though we're going to pay well under this let's get barcola through the door as this would be a proper statement signing and this is a real statement to the bundesliga bradley barcola joins munch and gladback for 60.5 million euros and adding malik tio and bradley barcola to the club really boosts the profile of our starting 11 they are two excellent young players, both over 80 rated, and I'm really confident we're going to have a really good season. And we are left with 15 million euros in the bank, which I don't think is going to bring anyone into the starting 11. So we'll save this money to renew some contracts and bring some youth players in. But other than that, that could be our transfer window done. And boys, I've had a bit of a mer. I didn't realise that our right winger was actually in on a season long loan. I thought he was actually our player. So I initially did sign Barcola to play it on the left as an inside forward. However, his name's completely gone at the top of me. That player we had on the right wing, who was actually 80 rated, has gone. He was only in on loan, so Barcola will have to play on the right. And Hack comes back into the starting 11 on the left. We have got 15 million euros remaining. Could we bring in a really good young player? I don't know. But we have really, really messed up there. And that's what happens when you don't pay perfect attention. And we have made one final signing of the transfer window. Our scouts found centre back Sandro Moliera on the free agents list. He's 18 years old, 71 rated, and he has been signed as cover. Hopefully, he develops into a really really decent backup centre back but after adding Barcola and Tio to the starting 11 I do actually think we have massively improved our starting 11 I think the squad does look good I think we've spent our money well that is our incomings done and I'm not prepared to let anyone else leave the club this summer and our bench once again is looking strong there are two young players on there in Focado and Ulrich don't think they're going to be called upon too much though so all in all I would say we've had an excellent transfer window we're not letting anyone else leave the club all that we have to do now is have a quick glance at the conference league table so ladies and gentlemen i just said that our transfer window is officially closed well 
well, well, well. We had a bid come in for Thomas Savancera, which we just could not refuse. Sporting Lisbon have signed him for 18 million euros. And as you know, we already had 15 million left in the bank. So we did have 35 million euros to play with to bring in a striker. And we saw that Yusufa Mokoko's contract was expiring in 11 months time. We have brought him to Mönchengladbach for 26 million euros. What a deal. 20 years old, 80 rated. The guy is a joke in career mode. And he will now be a starting striker heading into season two. Now with Mokoko added to our attack, I am really, really confident we're going to have a great season. And somewhere along the way, I've had a bit of a mix up as we're not in the conference league. We're actually in the Europa League, which is really, really good. Could bring in some extra finances if we can go on a decent run. There's some very, very good teams in the Europa League though this year. I do think we'd have to be a very, very best to win this tournament. We have got to play the likes of Leon, Atalanta, Victoria SC, who's a former career mode rebuild favourite. Just to name a few, I do think it's going to be very difficult, but we have got a decent squad and I would like to see us at least get through the league phase maybe to the quarterfinal and I'd be happy. So all that we've got left to do now, boys, is simulate forward straight through to the end of season two. I really hope season one's performance wasn't a fluke. I want to try and get into the top six again in the Bundesliga. So we've arrived at the end of season two and we have progressed in the Bundesliga as we have finished fifth this season on 65 points, meaning we have got guaranteed Europa League qualification. We was only six points behind fourth place Borussia Dortmund. So in all honesty, it's a massive step forward in the right direction and with the right additions next season we could easily get into that top four and you guessed it lads we were knocked out of the DFB Pokal in the first round this time by Bayern Munich and they smashed us 5-1 but in season three we will be playing in the Champions League as we have beaten Fiorentina 3-0 in the Europa League final and Borussia Mönchengladbach are three time UEFA Cup winners and I just want to have a little moment of silence for Fiorentina they've lost two Conference League finals and the Europa League final. You just have to feel sorry for their fans. So Champions League football is coming to Borussia Park in season three, but is the squad good enough? Well, looking at the team on paper, the first thing you're going to notice is that we have got a new left winger in Yildiz. Well, Robin Hack handed in a transfer request, very bizarrely, as he was starting every game out on the left wing. Borussia Dortmund come in and offered us 24 million euros for him. There was absolutely no way I wasn't accepting that offer. But then did a little bit of scouting and brought in his replacement, Kenan Yildiz. This guy is a superstar in the making in real life he joined the club for 13 million euros is 21 78 rated worth 21 million already and i'm really really excited about the future this guy's got a brussia munch and glad back so yildis is our new left winger but looking at the rest of the squad we have got some world-class players in our starting 11 mokoko barcola corner and tio are absolutely insane players and they are all champions league level we've also seen players like omlin Scally and Reitz have good growth as well this season, but it does make me think, where do I improve the team in season three? Well, we are now in the Champions League, so we have got to start bringing star quality through the door. And I do think while Reitz is a good central midfielder, I do think we could maybe bring someone in with higher potential who actually makes our midfield better now. As Reitz is a decent player, he's 23 year old and probably will grow a little bit more. But I'm just thinking about the longevity of the football club. We've absolutely got to get some more world-class players into the team. And if we do have any money left after we've signed a central midfielder, I will look to bring in the new centre-back to replace Itakaru. He is a great centre back and has done so well for us but at 29 year old and 79 rated it's pretty much at his ceiling and we need better if we're going to establish ourselves in the champions league that's the one thing about rebuilding clubs boys there's no room for sentiment as we check the sats and yusufa mokoko was absolutely brilliant what a signing this man turned out to be 27 goals and six assists followed up by bradley barcola who was an absolutely brilliant signing again 17 goals eight assists 25 goal involvements you love to see it so so many reasons to be excited about about this Borussia Mönchengladbach team. We're getting into season three. We're going to have a much bigger transfer budget. And now it's time to establish ourselves as a Champions League side season on season. So we have arrived in season three and we have got a very healthy transfer budget of 70 million euros. So our primary target of season three will be to improve in the central midfield position and we have found the absolute perfect man for us. That man is currently playing in Holland. His name is Quinton Timber. He's 84 rated, 25 year old. His stats are just absolutely amazing. Amazing. All these stats are over 80 rated. 
except for shooting, which is 77. He's full of player styles, but the only negative is Feyenoord could ask for up to 71 million euros for Timber, meaning we may not be able to afford him. And if we do sign Timber, it's likely that will be the only signing we make in season three. And what a signing this is. Quinton Timber joins us for 60 million euros, but that could be our transfer window finish. And after the signing of Timber, we're left with just 8 million euros. So unless a massive bid comes in for one of our players that we just can't turn down, that could be the only incoming of season three. So our season has kicked up with a UEFA Super Cup tie against Manchester City. Unfortunately, we lost the tie 3-2. Very entertaining game and Man City take on the Super Cup. But to push a team like City all the way in a cup final only gives me more confidence that we're more than ready to take on the Champions League. So our transfer window has ended and there's only been three outgoings this season. We did let veteran Stefan Liner head to Heidenheim for 1.3 million. Academy graduate Ted Janssen will spend the season with Ayup Sport on loan. And third choice goalkeeper Jan Oshkoski has joined Hoffenheim on a two-year loan. So that is our transfer window done. No further incomings, no outgoings. Let's get checking our Champions League running. So as you would imagine, the Champions League is looking stacked with the best clubs in the world. We kick off our campaign with a home tie against Besiktas. That will be pretty difficult. We will then take on PSG in our second game. Not getting much easier. And then we are away to Chelsea. We have Hungarian side for Entros, which should be a decent game. Villarreal away. I tell you what, lads. Our Champions League running is very difficult. If we can get through to the knockouts, I'll be absolutely buzzing. And there's only one way to find out if we do get through to the knockouts, and that is by simulating forward straight through to the end of Season 3. So we've arrived at the end of Season 3, and we have progressed once again on the pitch, finishing third in the Bundesliga table. On 69 points, meaning Champions League football will once again be returning to Borussia Park in Season 4. We won 21 of our 34 games and were the league's highest scorers of 80 goals, which is incredibly impressive. Maybe next season we can have a go at winning the league title. Now we finally managed to get out of the first round of the DFP Pokal, which is an achievement in itself in FC25. We made it all the way to the semis, where unfortunately it was heartbreak as Wolfsburg beat us 3-2, and they would go on to lose 3-2 to Leipzig in the final. The Champions League, we did get to the playoffs as we finish mid-table in the league phase, but unfortunately, Porto knocked us out 4-2 on aggregate. So improvements need to be made in the Champions League because I think next season, we've got to be aiming for at least a quarter-final. So this is how the starting eleven is looking at the end of season three, and it is absolutely quality all over the pitch. We have got one of the Bundesliga's best players in Bradley Barcola, 89 rated. Players like Omlin, Tio, Kone, Timber, and Mokoko are all looking excellent as well, with Yildiz becoming a very solid winger out on the left. Our bench was also very strong this season with two players over 80 rated which no doubt has swung some games in our favour. So heading into season 4 I definitely think we need to bring a new left back to the club as Nets just hasn't really been going too well. I do think Scally will continue to grow in the right back position whereas Nets is kind of faltering. So a left back will be priority and we will once again be looking for a centre back to replace Itakaru. We couldn't afford to get one last summer, we are going to have a much bigger budget in season 4. So I think we can definitely bring in a new left back and centre back. And if we nail them signings, we are going to be a serious force in season four. Now looking at the stats, Yusuf and Mokoko was absolutely outstanding, getting 33 goals and 7 assists in 51 games. Our wingers were excellent as well as Barcola got 23 goals and 14 assists and Yildiz got 19 goals and 6 assists. That is really, really strong returns from all of our forward players. So season three was a massive success. We're going to get a massive budget in season four and we need to make the signings correct if we want to progress any further. We have arrived in season for and I am slightly disappointed with the budget as we've only got 91 million euros so we may have to sell one or two players. So kicking off our season 4 transfer window we are going for a centre back who's been one of our primary targets throughout the entirety of this rebuild, Lenny Yoro who is currently playing for Barcelona he's 21 year old, 82 rated, really like the stats, however it could be a pricey deal as Barcelona could command up to 51.2 million euros for him but with 90 million in the bank this should not be an issue and we have got a great deal for Yoro signing in for just 45 million. So after the Signing of Lenny Oro, we're left with 49 million euros in the bank. And we want to carry on the French connection by bringing left back Quinton Merlin to the club. He is 25 years old, he's 82 rated. I really like the look of his stats, very well rounded, and he falls well into our price ranges. The max of either we're going to ask for him is 46 million euros, but I do think we can get that price down. And for 41 million euros, we have brought Quinton Merlin to the club. We are now left with just 5 million euros in the bank, and with plans not to sell any of our key players, that is probably our transfer window finished. And that would mean 
mean this would be the Munch and Gladback team to take us into season four. And with the additions of Yoro and Merlin, this team is looking much stronger at the back. We've got an excellent midfield and a frightening attack. I do think we're going to be a serious force to be reckoned with this season. And in this transfer window, we have let a couple of our fringe players go. Moritz Nicholas has joined Porto for 8.2 million. Fabio Chirodia has joined Genoa for 3.9 million. And we have also loaned out Academy graduate Grigoyev Popov and more to Lublin for two seasons. Now, I really cannot see any more business being done in this transfer window. So I think all that's left to do is check what's going on with the Champions League. So the transfer window is officially closed. Once again, the Champions League is stacked for the best clubs in the world. Kick off our campaign with an away tie to FC Copenhagen, which we have to be winning. We then take on Red Bull Salzburg, which is once again a favourable game. We then take on Aston Villa. Again, another favourable tie. Porto, Roma, do you know what? I do think we've landed quite lucky with our fixture draws in the Champions League. I'm really hopeful we can get to at least the quarterfinals. So we've had a very successful summer. The squad's looking a lot stronger. Let's simulate forward straight through to the end of the season and find out if it was indeed a big season. So we have arrived at the end of season four and we have achieved a fourth place finish in the Bundesliga, winning 24 of our 34 games, finishing on 76 points. Amassing a massive 19 point gap between us and fifth place. And then there's only seven points separating first to fourth. Really, really tight at the top of the Bundesliga. We haven't improved in league position, but we have got more points on the board. And once again, in season five, we will be in the Champions League. And we have won the DFP Pokal boys. We have beat Bayern Munich 3-1 in the final, adding another trophy to Munch and Gladbach's very prestigious trophy cabinet. In the Champions League, we did make the quarterfinals, but we come up against the sternest of tests in Real Madrid and we narrowly lost 4-3 over two legs. And very interestingly, lads, Real Sociedad would go on to actually win the tournament, which is absolutely crazy. So I do think we're just one or two signings away from the Champions League final. And looking at that team, boys, it's clear to see why this team is stacked full of world-class players like Barcola, who is now 92 rated and one of the best players in the world. Pones, 89 rated, followed by players like Timber, 86, Yildiz, is at 86. Got Theo and Mo Koko 88 and 87 respectively and Yoros had a great season going to 86 rated. However a new season and it is new challenges for us as Omlin and Weigel are 34 and 33 respectively and they will start to decline in overall in season 5. So we have got to bring in a new central defensive midfielder and a goalkeeper who are not only first team quality but they've got to at least match the overalls of Omlin and Weigel which we could struggle with as our budgets haven't been massive in this rebuild. And looking at the stats you saw for Mo Koko, Coco was outstanding. Once again, 37 goals and 8 assists. This man is just a career more Donny. Kone was excellent as well, getting 21 goals and 10 assists. Barcola, one of the best wingers in the world, getting 19 and 15. And a really good season for Yildiz as well, who got 12 and 6. So we performed on the pitch. We had a good run in the Champions League and added a trophy to our trophy cabinet. I'd call that a very successful season 4. We're now getting into season 5. And let's just keep this progression coming season on season. So we are now in season 5 and we have got 111 million euros to bring in a CDM and a goalkeeper who have to be at least 84 rated and I can't lie lads with that budget it's just not happening so there will be some first team player sales in this window but FC25 has handed us a bit of a lifeline as Lucas Chevalier of Chelsea his contract is expiring in 11 months time his stats are insane he's 26 year old 86 rated and we can get him for under his market value the max Chelsea are going to want is 54 million but I'm sure we can get the price down this would be an excellent way to kickstart season 5 transfer business and we have got an insane deal for Chevalier playing just 46 million euros and that leaves us with 59 million in the bank and given the fact that we are going to have some outgoings in this window I think we're going to have more than enough to replace Weigel and we did say there would be some first team outgoings in this window and three players have left us. Jonas Omlin has joined Chelsea for 14 million euros. Lucas Ulrich has joined that team who I don't know for 1.6 million euros and Shio Ficado has joined Go Ahead Eagles for 2 million euros and that does mean we have a respectable 69 million euros to bring a CDM to the club and we have scouted an absolute gem of a central defensive midfielder and this man actually scored against England at Euro 2024 and that man is Martin Hulmund of Lyon he is 86 rated and 29 years old in the peak of his career his stats are absolutely brilliant he does fall well within our transfer budget as the max are paying for him is 58 million he's two overalls better than Weigel he's four years younger this would be a great signing and Hulmund is in for just 58 million so we have got two excellent deals in this window and after the signing of Hulmund we've only got 6 million 
and left mid in our window is definitely done. And with the new signings placed into the starting 11, this is how the team is looking going into season five. We have built such a good team here at Munch and Gladbach. I just really hope this squad of superstars can do the business in season five. And heading into the new season, we have got an absolutely stacked bench. Only seven of these players will make it, and that will see Oshkoski and Moriura drop to the reserves. We kick off season five with an excellent super cut victory, beating Leipzig on penalties, and we kick off the season with some silverware to add to the trophy cabinet. So a very successful transfer window is now in the history books. We're looking at the Champions League table. As we always say, best teams in the world as always. Kick things off with a very difficult tie away to Real Madrid, and it gets no easier as our second game is away to AC Milan. So we literally could not have asked for a more difficult start in the Champions League. So we will now be simulating forward straight through to the end of Season 5. And with the team we have built, we can be a real force this season. We have arrived at the end of Season 5, boys, and our performance in the Bundesliga was better in terms of position, but worse in terms of points gained as we got 69 points, finished third, drew a lot more games than we did last season, only winning 20 of our 34. Last season, we won 24 out of 34. So still a really impressive season, but the gap between us and top of the league has grown to eight points. Leipzig have just been so dominant in Germany and you have to set your hats off to them. They've won like three titles in a row and no one looks like they're coming close to defrauding them. We would then go on to lose in the DFB Pokal final on penalties to Bayern Munich. Really, really good performance in the tournament to get to a final and we all know penalties are just a complete lottery. But I know something that will soften the blow. We have reached the Champions League final where we will take on Napoli. We have had an outstanding performance in the Champions League as we came second in the league phase where we would take on Manchester United and convincingly beat them 5-2 over two legs. We would then take on Real Madrid in the quarterfinals once again. We did lose the second leg 3-1 but because we won the first leg we go through 5-4 on aggregate in a thrilling tie. We would then go on to take on Bayern Munich and this time we would get our own back as we drew 2-2 in the second leg but our work in the first leg meant we won the tie 5-4 and that will set up a final with Napoli. So this will be the Munch and Gladbach team to take us into the Champions League final and it is looking absolutely outstanding. We have got two players now over 90 rated in Kone and Barcola. Now Coco is 89 rated, Yildiz, Tio, Yoro and Timber all 88 rated. The team looks so, so strong on paper. Looking at our bench, full of talent once again with so many options there to bring on in the final and I genuinely think we've got a really good chance of beating Napoli in the final. So in terms of stats, this season it was Bradley Barcola who was our best player and he was insane. He got 42 goals and 14 assists in 57 games. That is a ridiculous return but he is currently one of the best players in the game. Now it is time to induct someone to the Scott Attempts game in FC25 Hall of Fame and it really is impossible for me to look anywhere else other than Bradley Barcola. The guy has consistently double figure goals. He's grown to 93 rated. He was our first signing of the rebuild and he has been absolutely insane for five consecutive seasons and he will join Matt O'Reilly in the Hall of Fame. Massive congratulations to Bradley Barcola and we have got one thing left to do. Take on Napoli in the Champions League final. And here we go, boys. It is Champions League final time at Wembley Stadium. Can Munch and Gladbach bring the trophy to Germany? I've made a really strong start here, boys. We're really getting at Napoli. Great by Yildiz. Goes for a finesse shot, and it's another easy save for Marais. Timber back to Barcola. That's a really nice move so far. Barcola looking for Timber. He's going to get there. Oh, he's just not quite going to get there. He's actually got past Oshiman, don't let him shoot. And that is a big waste by Victor Oshiman. That's Napoli's first real sight of goal. Timber, that is a fantastic ball by Timber. Barcola, the Hall of Fame inductee. And it's a great save by Mary. Hutchinson having a lot of joy on that side. And he gets past Scali, that is not good. As a dig, and it's a good save by Cavalier. And it's out eventually and that is going to be half time that could be such a big moment a goal on the stroke of half time there for napoli proper swings of time in their favor chevalier is there to make a huge save a really even first half who is going to be the difference maker in this second half napoli did bring adi amy on at half time i think the thing with napoli they have been winning the midfield battle i would say adi amy don't foul him and it's a good save by chevalier i would have liked him to catch it to be fair i call her timber give it him back Oh, it's a good move. This is a really, really good move. I need my Coco to make a better run than that. I'm going to have to have a go at goal. And it's saved. Oh, it's a Quadio Cone. What a tackle. What a tackle. And this game has burst into life, lads. It's so end-to-end. -end. My Coco. It's a nice little turn, that, you know. Oh, my Coco's in. This is a huge moment. I can sweat it. And I am doing He's 1-0, boys. It's offside. Why did I sweat it? Quadio Cone puts us 1-0 up, but it's offside. 
Oh, I should have just shot. Oh, it's literally so marginal as well. It's so marginal. That was a chance. What a turn by Mokoko. This is it. This is the chance. It's in. So for Mokoko in the 81st minute. And it is 1-0 to Borussia Mönchengladbach. And we have definitely deserved that goal in the second half. It's a class turn from Mokoko. And look at this for a finish, boys, from the penalty spot. Murray, no chance. We are literally minutes away from winning the Champions League. Mokoko. Back over, that's amazing. Dink. Oh, what a goal. What a way to wrap up the Champions League final with an audacious lob. It's Bradley Barcola. Look at the celebrations. And it is our Hall of Fame inductee who has wrapped up this final for Munch and Gladback. Washman could be in here. What a tackle by Malik Tio. What a tackle. But there's the full-time whistle, boys. We have won the Champions League with Borussia Mönchengladbach. Two goals in the last 10 minutes. Swing the tie in our favour. And a goal that's worth capping off any rebuild from Bradley Barcola. What a rebuild this has been. And what a team we have built here at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Not many household names, but proper workhorse midfielders. And there we are, boys. Borussia Mönchengladbach are the champions of Europe. And that is another rebuild successfully boxed off. I just want to say a massive thank you for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as we are trying to get 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And next week, I think it's time to finally rebuild the club that I support.